Part of it reads like this. After Donald Trump's election, some universities echoed with primal howls. Faculty members canceled classes for weeping. <laughs> I'm Stop. sorry. Joe, Keep going. Keep let going. me get through it. They're so open-minded. <laughs> Terrified students who asked, how could this be possibly happening? I share apprehensions about President-elect Trump, but I also fear the reaction was evidence of how insular universities have become. When students inhabit liberal bubbles, they're not learning much about their own country. We liberals are adept at pointing out the hypocrisies of Trump, but we should also address our own hypocrisy in terrain we govern, such as most universities. Too often we embrace diversity of all kinds, except for ideological. We we champion tolerance, except for conservatives and evangelical Christians. We want to be inclusive of people who don't look like us, so long as they think like us. Wow. Ouch. Yeah. Yes. Powerfully true. That would be a big yes, Nick Kristoff. I mean, I, it, it really. Sorry, but that's the truth. That is an important column, not for conservatives to read to go hell it's for yeah, everybody, but for liberals to read. I, I one of the things that I've throughout my entire life. For the I, I've we known lost. that whether I was an undergrad, even at Alabama in some schools, or in law school, I had to defend every word I said. Whereas somebody center left could say something stupid, everybody would agree with them because there was this group think that caused people to be intellectually flabby. And they just did. I read the New York Times. I, I could. The New York Times had a profile on John Roberts, and people were saying, "Well, why is he so great in front of the Senate?" Because John Roberts, a, a classmate, said every time he raised his hand in law school at Harvard, he knew he was going to get his head knocked off. And so you just sharpen your arguments. Where if you're around a place that doesn't let Condi Rice come and speak at a graduation because she's too conservative, or Christine Lagarde is too offensive, then Harold, you talk about illiberal education. That's not liberal education. Illiberal education has seized college campuses across America, as Nick Kristof said. Mm -hmm. And you only have like one out of 10 professors uh, that are Republicans or conservatives. You can't understand the world if you don't let it in behind your, your gates. The most powerful statement is the final sentence that, that Mika quoted yeah. about diversity is not just about embracing folks who don't look like you, but people don't think like you. My alma mater and Peter's alma mater, my law school alma mater, Michigan, uh, President Obama spoke there uh, for commencement several years ago, and he indicated one of the things he hoped that all these students would do would be for conservatives to read a little Huff Post and for liberals to read a little Drudge Report to understand mm -hmm. right. you know, right. where, not only where each is coming from, but to, point sh to your point, sharpen your own argument. It is embarrassing that every uh, elite conservative or liberal kind of got this race wrong, with the exception of a handful. Right. Yeah. Uh, one of the things the country has to do after every race is to raise the hood and to understand Democrats and Republicans. What happened? Why was there such disconnect? Right. David Brooks had one of the better columns during the year when he said, look, I've got to leave my office. You comment and own it. You and Mika both. Leave this tower I sit in and get out and try to understand what's happening in the country. It, Universities, it has to start it's there. Got to wow. start. Kids don't feel comfortable having honest, vigorous debates there or conversations there. The arguments won't are leave so from closed off. I, I feel sorry for the kids there. I really do because they're so closed off. And this isn't just the Ivy League. Again, I went to the University of Alabama, a very conservative Southern state school culturally. The only group that you have about football. I yeah. I, <laughs> I I was a liberal arts major. I don't. I can't remember a single conservative to moderate Republican professor I had. They were all obviously Democrats. Which again, it's fine with me because I spent my entire life putting my arguments. But if, again, everywhere you go, people say you're right, no matter how weak your argument is, it creates an intellectual laziness that allows you to see yes. your party collapse and you wake up one day and you only have 11 or 12 governors nationwide. And this notion that, that an opposing political view is not just wrong, but that it's it's offensive. Like yeah, that you evil. can't possibly bear the thought of having to be exposed to the other side's argument. It's right. so corrosive. Yeah, yep. it is. Well, it's arrogant too. Because, I mean, imagine if if a speaker comes to your campus and you don't want to listen to him, don't go to the speech. Right. Yeah. But to say I don't want anybody else to listen to them and to shut down. That's, that's terrible. That's really remarkable.